How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we'll talk about different yeast. And I'll specifically be comparing five different kinds of yeast. And we'll try to clear up some misconceptions. So what I got here is Dove's Farm Quick Yeast. Then I got Allison's Easy Bake Yeast. The third one is also Allison's, but it's active yeast. The fourth one is an instant yeast from a company called Fermipan. And the last one is Pinnacle Fresh Yeast or Cake Yeast, call it what you want. Although there's five different packets and they all go by different names, there's only three kinds of yeast on this table. Fresh yeast, instant dry yeast and active dry yeast. You obviously see which one the fresh yeast is and the middle one is the active dry yeast. And again, even though we got different kinds of yeast, different packaging, different names, at the end of the day, it's all the same bacteria. It's all one strain of yeast. Now let's have a closer look at these. I'm gonna make five loaves of bread. And we're gonna use the appropriate amount of yeast for each. The difference between instant dry and active dry is that active is a little bit more grainy. And of course the fresh yeast contains water, that's why it's more like a putty texture. So I'm hoping you can see what I'm getting at here. All this yeast, all the yeast that you can buy, is the same yeast. The main difference is in how you use it. Instant dry yeast or easy bake yeast or quick yeast can be added to flour, dry. The same goes for the cake yeast. But active dry yeast needs to be dissolved in water beforehand. Now remember that cake yeast contains water, so you need to account for that when you're calculating the amount of water you're going to use in your bread. Now to keep this nice and fair, of course, the water is the same temperature, we're using the same amount of everything, or the appropriate amount. You do need a little bit more active dry yeast than instant dry yeast. I'm using 1.5 grams of the instant dry yeast, 1.8 grams of the active dry yeast, and 4.5 grams of the fresh yeast. And that's only because part of it is water. So as I said earlier, the only difference between all of them when you add them to your dough is that the active dry should be dissolved in water. But as a rule, any yeast I use, I dissolve it in water. This will make the process fail proof and it will also prevent any unnecessary lumps from forming. And it will help with distributing all the ingredients evenly throughout the mix. So to give everything a fair chance and keep it equal, I'm gonna make this as quickly as I can. I don't want the last dough to lag behind the first dough for too long. And I'm gonna make this bread a no knead bread, meaning that I'm not gonna knead it, I'm not gonna work it. That will ensure that I have the same temperature on each dough. And of course, this is not some kind of science experiment. This is a real life, do it at home, real situation. Because I know there's too many people out there claiming that this yeast is best and that yeast is best. And what may be best for them might not be best for you. I use instant dry yeast most of the time because it is the most readily available yeast in the local shop. Using fresh yeast only makes sense if you're baking all the time because it does expire a lot quicker than dry yeast. And of course, for someone like me who bakes all the time, it would make sense to use fresh yeast, but it's not as readily available. And the thing is that in the end result, there is literally no difference. So I've made all my dough, and looking at the temperature, there's a very small difference of about 0.1, 0.2 of a degree. Again, this is not science experiment, but this will do. Right, so I'm gonna cover these up, let them ferment, give them a couple of folds, then pre-shape them, the final shape, and then we'll bake them later on. But this experiment will be thinking, why do some people think that the yeast that they use is the best yeast? Well, it's very simple. It's because that's the yeast that they use. And they've had many successful bakes using that yeast. And perhaps in the beginning, when they weren't as experienced with bread making, they were using different kind of yeast, it wasn't going their way. But then they tried different yeasts, they learned from their baking mistake beforehand and when that led to a success they thought must be the yeast fault the thing is that yeast doesn't make bread you make bread and of course we can say this about anything you can't blame your oven your mixer any of your equipment or your ingredients because you are the one making the bread the worst baker with the best ingredients and the best equipment will not make a better bread than an experienced baker with the worst ingredients and the worst equipment. All right, so how is my dough doing here? I've given it a couple of folds, 
I do feel that the one made with fresh yeast is puffing up more rapidly. And most likely is that because I mixed it first. Or maybe that yeast is just more active. It doesn't mean it's better in any way, I should have probably used less. Now we're going to do the pre-shaping, lay the rest on the bench and then do the final shape before the final fermentation. Now every time I write a recipe, and you'll see this in all of my recipes, I say use X amount of dry yeast or three times the amount of fresh yeast. But as I said earlier in the video, you need more active dry yeast than instant dry yeast. I don't normally mention it, because the worst thing that could happen is that you may have to let your dough rise for a little bit longer. This goes back to my point about you making the bread. It is not the recipe that fails, it is us that fail. So if you hear someone say, this will take three hours of bulk fermentation, and instead of keeping an eye on it, you just leave it for three hours and expect it to be done by that time, then you are likely to fail. Conditions in every kitchen are different. The rate of fermentation of your yeast might be slightly different. It is up to us as bakers to learn to recognize these differences and only take the next step when the bread is ready, not when you are ready, not when the recipe is telling you. So that being said, the four pieces of dough that are made with dry yeast are fermenting more or less at the same rate. The one with fresh yeast is puffing up more rapidly and they are all ready for the final proof now. I've done the final shaping, but if I let the fresh yeast bread ferment for the same amount of time as the dry yeast ones, it will overproof. So what do I do? Either cut the fermentation time down, or in this case, I'll pop it in the fridge to cool it down. And the cold in the fridge will slow down the fermentation. And this is what I say about reacting appropriately. I could have just gone and said, well, the recipe says half an hour, so I'll leave it for half an hour. And then when it over ferments, I go and blame the recipe, which is wrong. Now halfway through the final proof, I know this dough is cooled down sufficiently, so I can reunite it with his brothers, cup them up and leave them for the final stretch. So as you can clearly see so far, they're all more or less the same, right? The only difference was in the way we used them and the methods that we took. Less instant dry yeast, a little bit more active dry yeast, of course a lot more fresh yeast because it contains water. I'll give them a quick cut, pop them in the oven and then we can compare the end result. The main thing I'm looking for here is flavor because I know the fermentation was more or less the same. Taste is the last thing and I've heard this numerous times people saying that dough made with fresh yeast tastes better. I have never noticed the difference but then again I've never had two breads side by side, one with made with fresh yeast, one with dry yeast. So I'll let these cool down, and then cut into them, see what's inside. And surprise, surprise, they all feel and look exactly the same. They even smell the same. Now a quick note on the fresh yeast, it does handle sugar and salt a little bit better than dry yeast. Meaning that salt and sugar would slow down dry yeast more than it would slow down fresh yeast. But again, you control things like that by adjusting fermentation time or temperature. So let's give it a taste. Let's try the fresh yeast dough, and the dry yeast dough side by side and see the difference. And for me, there is no difference. So what's the conclusion? It's like I said before, it's all the same yeast. The difference is in how you use it and how much you use and what meets your specific requirements. The yeast does not make your bread. You make the bread. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.